The Morning Rush with John and Maria. We do have a special guest joining us this morning on the phone, a Ballarat, Ballarat man, Maria, by the name of John Ma. Now, uh, we speak about the road toll and uh, how tragic it is mm. and how uh, we, we need to uh, you know, pay sp- close attention to, to what happens on our roads. And we read some of those notes from uh, the students at Ballarat. Yes, before. they were very moving co- uh, comments, weren't S- they? Speaking very highly about John, uh, who speaks to schools, go, go around Victoria speaking to schools about uh, the close calls he has had uh, with road trauma. Himself, he lost his uh, daughter to, uh, to road trauma. To tell us more, John uh, joins us. Good morning, John. Good morning, John and Maria. Tell us, uh, tell us your story, John. Well, with Carmen's the... story, mm. as you refer to it as. Certainly. Um, 20 years ago, um, my youngest daughter, Carmen, who was 18 years and three months, and she was a Year 12 student in uh, Bendigo Catholic College, she took her best friend into McDonald's on the Saturday morning because uh, her best friend, who was also a Year 12 student and 18, but didn't yet have her licence, and uh, she worked part-time at McDonald's in Bendigo, so Carmen took her in to work that morning. What we didn't know at the time was that um, the two girls had talked till 4.30 in the morning. Carmen had come out and stayed uh, overnight like she had done hundreds of times before. And both of the girls were really tired, and um, thankfully Carmen had dropped Carmen Trevine off at McDonald's. But on the way home, um, my daughter Carmen went to sleep at the wheel at 100 kilometres an hour. She hit a tree and was killed instantly, and... Um, uh, my eldest daughter, Michelle, uh, who was on her way to work that morning, was the third car on the scene. Oh. And uh, so our lives changed forever on that day, and um, we lost Carmen out of our lives forever. And as I say to the students when I speak to them, actually, Carmen was truly the lucky one that day because um, Carmen had died instantly, um, but not us. We've... Um, I say we've been dying slowly ever since. We, uh, we've been trying to live with this and I, I feel so sorry for every family who goes through this because unfortunately in this country we are not unique and families face this almost on a daily basis and they have to try and live with it for the rest of their lives. Yes, indeed. And uh, interesting though, John, you had already dealt with your own uh, car trauma pr- previously by two years and uh, yeah. you were just getting get better from that. So that would I had been... Maria. Yeah. Yes, I, I, uh, I was going to a cricket function and um, as I was going into Axdale just out of Bendigo, I saw a car lose control, a four-wheel drive lose control in front of me. I stopped on the highway. It rolled t- towards me, bounced up in the air and it bounced so high it landed upside down on the roof and bonnet of my car. And I was really seriously injured, so much so I was told that I would never work again. And um, uh, tragically, an 18-year-old girl who'd only had a licence for 23 days, she lost her life in that car crash so uh that was we thought that we were dealing with something tremendously bad at the time when that happened to me and then just two and a half years later we lost calm and so <laughs> i can tell you that no family is immune to what can happen on our roads we just have to be incredibly vigilant and that's why I, two years after uh, we lost Carmen. Four students were killed in Bendigo on in a car crash. Yeah. And that's when I decided I needed to do something about this and take Carmen's story to schools. And I, I speak to uh, between 70 and 80 schools a year where 14,000 students hear Carmen's story every year. Well, it, and it, your story must get through to the students because some of those letters we were reading before, they felt, a, a you know... Uh, a genuine attachment to you, you know. I wanted to to give you a hug after after you spoke. So that must be tiring for you to uh, t- to have to tell that story at, at all of these schools. But obviously, very rewarding as well when you see what the students get out of it. It it is so uplifting for me. I respond to every single comment made by the students because the students are magnificent. Give them the right message, and our country is in wonderful hands, and our road safety is in great hands because I've had thousands of these comments from students and as you've read out some of them, they understand. They understand what they will do to their mum and dad, to their brothers and sisters and their friends should they do to them what Carmen has done to us. And that's the message that I bring across and they they also understand who they are. I tell them they are the most important person in the world to the people who love them so much. And they need to understand that. Carmen wasn't hooning. I mean, I guess the uh, when you when you were speaking with eighteen year old, probably boys in particular, you know, hooning and driving erratically is uh, is 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 the big thing. But Carmen wasn't doing that. She was, she was fatigued. 
she was fatigued. You know, people don't understand fatigue, and we didn't as a family understand fatigue, and I'm ashamed, as I say to the kids, I'm ashamed to say that I used to always drive my car while I was fatigued. I'd be driving along the morning and my head would be nodding, but I'd say, oh, I've only got 20 k's to go, I've only got 10 mm. k's to go. People do that all the time, yeah, and, and we cannot do that because one day it will catch up to you, and if you don't kill yourself or injure yourself seriously, it would be horrific should you kill somebody else. I don't know how people could live with that. When I lost, when I had my car accident and young Emma lost her life in that, I spent two years in counselling trying to come to terms with that and yet it wasn't my fault. I was sitting stationary on the highway but I struggled so desperately with uh, thinking that a young girl should lose her life in a car crash that I was involved in. And heaven forbid that uh, you're going to have to deal with it yourself so directly only two years later. Amazing, John. Absolutely, yeah. And, and it's... It, uh, the thing that I see when I hear of a car accident where someone's been killed in a car crash or a motorbike crash like there was last week here in Ballarat, I don't see the person who has been killed. What I see is the family at home being told by the policeman that they've just lost their son or their daughter mm. or their father or their mum, and I see all of the people coming to the house like that came to our house, mm. people coming to support us, our family coming from interstate and things like that, and everybody walking into the house with their eyes literally sticking out of their head and they're crying, yeah. and there's such a dark cloud over those houses on that day. Your other daughter that was third on scene to Carmen's accident, mm. I know, I know, you know, you, this, you, you don't recover from this, but, but how is she now? Look, Michelle's still living today. She's 43 years old, and I tell the students she still blames herself for Carmen's death because that morning when they went out to the car, Michelle actually walked out with the two Carmens, and she said to my Carmen, Carmen, you're tired. Wind the window down, turn the wireless up, You'll be right, mate. I'll catch you later. Oh, wow. And because when Michelle went into the kitchen, Carmen was actually sitting at the kitchen table with her arm, head in her arms, and she was asleep at the kitchen table waiting for her friend to come in into the kitchen. So she knew, she, and Michelle knew she was tired. So Michelle still blames herself for this. But, you know, we don't. None of us do because our family didn't know anything about fatigue. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, so don't speed, don't drive tired. There's so many things to think a lot about, of messages, isn't it? Especially for the kids, mm. and and you're an absolute inspiration, John. Uh, you've dedicated your life to, you know, being part of the solution, trying to uh, educate our uh, our young drivers. And uh, I know you've you've been nominated before for the Australian of the Year. But if there's ever anyone worthy of an Australian of the Year, it's this man we got on the phone, absolutely, Maria. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank John, you, John. And, and, yeah. You know, and, and it's not me, though. It is actually Carmen, because as I say to the students, I'm only the spokesperson. This is Carmen's story. This is Carmen's message. And my daughter, Carmen, I know is reaching out and touching the hearts of all of these students that are listening to me and giving them the understanding how important they are, that they are just so important to stay in the lives of the family and the people who love them. And what about the schools? How amazing are they to bring me to these students? Now, I'm not sponsored or supported by anybody, the PAC or the government, even though I've written to them and asked them to support me so I can go to these schools. But these schools pay for me to drive to there, wherever that school is, and speak to their students. So I have to give a big shout-out to the yeah. schools because this is not just education, teaching or arithmetic and, and English and so on. This is keeping your children alive on the roads, giving them the understanding and the education how they can stay alive and make a difference on the roads. Yeah, we've got to do something to reduce the road toll, don't we? I mean, we're already we at 22 more this year than we were last year in, in Victoria. Mm. I'm sorry to tell you it's actually 25 as of today. Mm. Oh, no. 25 more. And it's just happening all the time. And as I say, you know, our family is not unique and another family will be touched again yeah. today and tomorrow and the next day, and it's horrific. John Maher uh, with Carmen's Road Safety uh, presentation that he does in, in schools. If, if you're listening from a school now, I think, yes, yes, we need to get John to speak. John, thank you for your time this morning. We do appreciate it. And you've got a, a, a great story to Well, not a great, you know what I mean. It's been mm. a, powerful, a powerful story to tell. Inspirational, motivational. It's all Thanks there. Thanks so much, John. Thanks, John. Yeah, that's great. Thank you.